Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. It's Labor Day weekend. Time to resume the Sunday night videos. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from WXRisk.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's time to talk about weather. I wanted to get this video out a little earlier, but uh, I'm not feeling that great. I'm a little on the weather, and my son is quite sick. So family matters, of course, come first. But anyway, we'll be talking about the uh, midday models here and also the 18Z GFS and some other stuff. And the main emphasis of conversation on this particular one is going to be Irma. Uh, that's the main emphasis. I'm not going to do anything else about it because there's so much information to talk about here. Also in terms of the reasoning and what I think is going to happen. So let's get right to it. Now, this is the uh, uh, 5 p.m. advisory. The new one should be out. It's not much different. Um, and you can see that swing here to the southwest, which is now underway. And by the way, for those of you keeping track of it, and I know you are, um, it was the uh, European model which first detected the southwest track. Yes, that's true. It was the European model that first detected the uh, track to the southwest here. So um, you can see it right in here going like this. And then, of course, it does this. Now, here's Puerto Rico. So it's going to pass north of Puerto Rico. And that poses the threat for the Bahamas and the southeastern United States. So that's what this turn it's, it's west southwest is important, increases the threat to the U.S. coast. And then if it were to stay that way and pass south of Puerto Rico, it would actually increase the threat for the Caribbean and maybe even the Gulf of Mexico. But all the hurricane models in the short term for the next four or five days show that it's going Irma is going to pass north of Puerto Rico. So we're going to operate under that assumption. Now, so is everybody else. Uh, all the other discussions, the other forecasts are doing that as well. If, for any reason, Irma were to pass south of Puerto Rico, this entire forecast discussion and everybody else's would be thrown into the trash and we'd have to do things all over again. So that's our first big point here. Got to pass north of Puerto Rico. Okay, good. So far, so good. All right. Um, now, there's the latest satellite picture as of uh, 10 p.m. this evening. You can see it doing very nice. Now, Irma is not a very big hurricane, uh, but it is growing in size. Um, and you can see their eye there. You can see the dip to the southwest. Very healthy looking system. And this big satellite picture shows you where it is in relationship to everything else. So we can see, you know, Puerto Rico is um, right here, as you can see, um, right there. And the Hispaniola, Cuba, there's Florida and the southeast U.S. coast. So um, that gives you an idea of where it is. Long way to go with the system. All right, let's talk about the GFS today. Um, this is the GFS for uh, valid for uh, day day eight, uh, September 10th. Now, on the Facebook page and on the website, I made the comment that if there is a category four or five hurricane that's going to hit the Carolinas or Southeast Virginia, the Delmarva, there's a better chance of monkeys flying out of my ass. Period. I stand by that statement. This is a 912 Category 5 hurricane about to hit Hatteras and Southeast Virginia. The strongest hurricane that has ever been, been north of Hatteras that we know of is around 940 millibars. This is just delusional. The issue is not whether or not the hurricane is going to strike the Carolinas or Virginia or the DeMarva or New England. That all is very possible. I'm talking about the intensity. This is not going to happen. Now, it's fun to look at, and if you're a weather weenie, you go, ooh, look at this huge storm. Wow, it looks terrific. But, you know, it's not reality. And we can see what it does here. Again, I enlarged this. Uh, I zoomed in on to the eastern U.S., and there it is, 922, Haley Wallace Island, devastating Norfolk, devastating Hampton Roads, devastating all the Delmarva, New Jersey, driving huge amounts of water into the Jersey coast up into New York City. This is a catastrophe. There's no way to describe it. This is a catastrophe. It's also bullshit. It's not going to happen. So I guess you could call the GFS catastrophic bullshit. I would. And then from there, it goes over Pennsylvania, ends up in Michigan. Now, I want to think about this one second, folks. Let's go backwards here one second. You really think a 912 hurricane, Category 5 hurricane hitting Hatteras is going to end up three days later in Michigan? Really? Really? You think that's going to happen? Okay. Good luck with that. And here's the GFS ensemble from early this morning. A same problem it's had for a while. It has three clusters of, of different solutions. Well, when you see the ensemble spread out like this, remember the ensemble is supposed to be more consistent than the operational run. This is telling me the entire model is screwed. It has no idea what the hell is going on. Now, this is the 6C GFS. It's a little tighter 
with a cluster on the eastern North Carolina coast. So maybe that's that's a better solution. OK, that's a step in the right direction. Then the 12Z GFS came out. And again, we have three different clusters of solutions here. Uh, really quite frustrating in terms of forecasting. One, two, and another cluster down here in Florida, three. So as a result, if you look at the GFS and if your nose is deep up the GFS's butt, then you're going to look at this and go, well, gee, I don't know what the for. It could happen anywhere. It could go from Florida to, to Maine. No, that's it's just you just have to dump the GFS because at this point the model is useless and the ensembles are even worse worse than useless. Now let's look at the European. Now early this morning, Saturday morning, the European had a moving a category five hurricane, or very close to a category five, uh, uh, over the northern Bahamas and then slams it in like Hugo 932 millibars over Charleston, South Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what it was doing here at day ten. And you can see the strength of the ridge. And, and this is really, really important. So let me change my marker here so you can see what I'm talking about. OK, here is the ridge. You see what it's doing? Not just the highs here, yes, over New England, but the ridge, the orange color. So as a result, the hurricane is deflected in this way. You can see it here as well. All right, the hurricane is trying to make the turn, but something is pushing inland. And as a result, you get a landfall. Now, eventually, what it would do from this point on here is go around the periphery of the high. Something like what Hugo did, but maybe closer to the coast. That's what the morning European did. Now, everyone says, well, the European is inconsistent going back and forth. But if you look at the European ensembles, you don't see that at all. Now, this is the European ensembles from Saturday morning. Of the 51 members here, the vast majority of these models are at the sea. Of the 51 members that I can count, uh, seven of them have landfalls. The rest are out to sea. Now, they bring it very close to the coast. Don't get me wrong. And it could graze the coast, go over Hatteras, go over Cape Cod. Very possible. Um, and we saw that there have been hurricanes which have done that. The 1944 September hurricane did that. Hurricane Helene in 1958, right along the coast, and then bounced off of Hatteras and up towards Cape Cod. So that solution is not out of, out of possibility. But that's what the GFS, this is what the European Ensemble mean is showing. OK, let's move on to the next one. Um, now, if we look at the 12Z, uh, G, uh, this is the 12Z uh, European, we can see it's showing something a little different. Uh, here it's got this it's the same category one you know category five hurricane on the Bahamas and we have a big upper low over um, you can see the green here uh, this big upper low over Maine and New England right there and there's our high so the, it, the trough is making a weakness and the hurricane is turning in this direction towards the system now this is uh, day eight on the European look what the hurricane is doing it's almost going due north now and we have a big dome here over Minnesota. You see the orange over Minnesota, Wisconsin? There's our dome. And then um, now begins to get pulled to the uh, west, uh, to the northeast, up towards Cape Cod, paralleling Hatteras way off the coast, not threatening anybody in coastal areas, and then maybe pounding the heck out of Cape Cod with hurricane force winds. Very reasonable solution. I like it a lot. And more importantly, it matches the European ensembles. Now, of the 51 members, uh, 14 of them show interaction with landfall. So again, the vast majority keep it close to the coast, but take it out to sea. If we look at the ensemble spread, uh, this is at day seven uh, on Saturday afternoons, European ensemble. And look at it. The vast majority of these uh, way out over here, big cluster, very tight in the Bahamas. OK, so we, that's a very good forecast. We know where it's going to be on September 9th, a week from a week from today. It's going to be here, the Bahamas. OK. That's a pretty good forecast. We know that's going to happen. Now, look at the spread here by day uh, uh, 10 almost. Again, m the vast majority of the ensemble members are um, here off the coast or very close to the coast. A few inland and a few by Florida, but the vast majority off the coast. Now, that's not a, a certainty. It's just that's where the probability is going. Now, I want to raise you the issue of Hurricane Joaquin in October 2015 because this is one of my best forecasts and I took a lot of crap from people because the GFS is forecasting a catastrophic hit in Hampton Roads while the European took the thing out to sea. And I'll give you an example. This is the GFS model. It was a valid September 30th and the European model. Now you can see what the GFS is doing. It had the hurricane coming inland into Hatteras, driving huge amounts of water and wind into eastern North Carolina, all of Virginia, the Delmarva. Catastrophic hit. And the European taking it out to sea. And as we all know, the European turned to be correct. If you look at the ensembles, again, the European ensemble, the vast majority kept it off the coast. Meanwhile, this is what the wretched GFS was doing. 
974 Category 2 hurricane moving in right over Norfolk into Richmond and up towards Charlottesville. Disastrous hit for the Chesapeake Bay and the Delmarva. Never happened. So, uh, I, it reminds me of the situation very much. All right, let's take a look at the synoptic analysis to find out why these up models are so different. There must be something going on here. We simply just can't look at a model and say, well, I like this one, I like that one. There's got to be more science behind it. Let's take a look here. All right, this first image shows you a comparison of the up air map on the GFS on the left and the Europeans on the right. So, again, uh, let me point it out so you can see it here. Okay, my marker. Okay, GFS is right here, and this here is the European right here. Okay, now, right at this point, both models are in pretty good agreement. Uh, the GFS is a little faster with Irma than the European, but they both have this trough right here. They both have a ridge, but look where the GFS ridge position is. You see how it goes into Nova Scotia? The European ridge position is, is further to the east. They both have this trough, and that's why it's the same ridge here. So far, so good. We're in good agreement so far. At day nine, excuse me, day eight, 180, 92 hours, they do not agree about anything. The first major difference is that look how fast the GFS is with Irma, much closer to the coast than the European. You notice that? Second, look at the ridge. See what this ridge is? Look what it is here. It goes all the way into Nova Scotia on the GFS. The European, it's way the hell out there. It's not even touching any portion of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland. Also, the other difference is that the GFS is, develops this upper low. You see this thing right here, which drops down this way. And what's happening is the GFS is phasing this system with Irma. And, and that's why it gets pulled inland. The European has no upper low. And the upper, the other thing that does is, see the ridge here? See how the European has got the ridge into in Michigan? The GFS does not have that. It's over Wisconsin. This upper low does the whole pattern. So that's a, the main reason why the differences are going on between these models. And then finally, uh, day nine, I should say, look what happens. Irma is pulled inland, as you can see, over Pennsylvania. And look where the ridge is on the GFS. This is important. Look where the ridge is, right here. Are you kidding me? Are you? This is a Rex block. We have a big dome here and a low underneath it. This is a Rex block, folks. The GFS sees this like some sort of winter storm. It's not. So uh, you don't see Rex blocks, very many of them, in early September over North America. You just don't see that. Now, the European, look, there's no ridge here at all. See this ridge? It's nothing. Completely different. And the dome was much further. And the upper low is over Tennessee. It doesn't phase at all. So as a result, Irma has an escape route, and it goes out this way. Pretty significant differences between these models, to say the least. Okay. Um, and then finally, we go to day 10. Look what happens. The GFS has a gigantic trough, a Rex block, a high pressure, a ridge over South Central Canada, an enormous trough running from the northern Great Lakes down to Alabama and uh, Georgia. The European has a dome over the Great Lakes, and Irma is moving off the coast rapidly. So very different solutions here. So, you know, very significant differences. Just think about what the GFS is suggesting. It has the strongest hurricane ever. They hit eastern North Carolina, Virginia, Maryland. It's a Category 4 or 5. And then from there, it goes over Washington, D.C. or Baltimore. It ends up in Michigan. Really? I, I'm, just, I, I'm stunned. I, anybody can even consider that a viable solution. Now, this here is the 18Z GFS. Oh, goody, 912 Category 5 hurricane hitting Hatteras. Sure, that's almost never happened before ever since it was the American Revolution. There has never been a hurricane this strong hitting Hatteras, ever. Nothing's even close. There it is going over Norfolk, out to Chesapeake Bay, over Washington, D.C. And then if you look at the European ensemble spread, gee, two different centers. Again, not a great one center here and another one here. I'm not, you know, it's just, I, I'm, I'm speechless. I just, I just do not know why the GFS is given the time. The solutions are so extreme. I, I guess you could say, well, you like the GFS track, but not the intensity. But to me, you're, you're splitting hairs here. If you go with one, you got to like the other one. I, I, I don't know that people can do what they want to with it. I just, I can't buy the European solution at this point. I mean, the GFS solution at this point, it's not that I'm hugging the European. I just can't forecast the Category 5 hurricane hitting Hampton Roads and eastern North Carolina. That's, that's what can I tell you? And if we look at the upper air pattern, the, G, the 18Z GFS is doing the same thing it did before. See this upper, see the trough here? There's the hurricane, right? And then if we clear it out, the 18Z GFS, uh-oh, there's the upper low again. It's leaving a piece back right in here. And the hurricane gets pulled into it, and it gets it forms a big storm right here. That's why it gets pulled inland. 
I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I think the model is overphasing the upper low and the hurricane. The GFS loves to do that. It does it all the time in the winter months. It does it all the time in the summer months. It's doing the same thing here. It's one of the reasons why it is an inferior weather model. Anyway, that's this week in weather. I'm meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.